Welcome. I'm Jack Churchward, and thanks for joining in my research into the lost continent of Mu and ancient advanced civilizations. These podcasts are created as the need arises, but you can catch more information reading the my-mu.com blog or visiting the my-mu.com website. Welcome to the 2014 my mucom year-end research review. It has been another very busy year for the research and to the life and theories of my great-grandfather, James Churchward. Most notable for me is the publication of my second book entitled The Stone Tablets of Mu. The book takes an in-depth look at James' 1927 book Copies of stone tablets found by William Niven in Santiago Ahuizacla near Mexico City. Signed copies are available from the my-mu.com bookstore of both my books. The interview last December for a Russian TV program was broadcast in Russian in February and is available on YouTube. Unfortunately, there are no English subtitles. I also participated in some interviews in 2014. These, as well as earlier ones, are online at jack.churchward.com. I sat down with Andrew Aloha, twice with both the US OKS gang and James Swagger. In July, I had my second and final interview with Dolores Cannon on the Metaphysical Hour. She was a noble spirit, and I will miss her wit and charm. My talk at the Ozark Mountain Publishing Transformation Conference in June entitled Researching Mu was a success. I also held my first workshop on the stone tablets of Mu. A short portion of my talk was uploaded to YouTube and here goes. In the past few years, a German magazine article announced the rediscovery of the Nikol tablets in India. According to my great-grandfather's works, the learned persons of Mu, known as the Nikal Brotherhood, copied the collected wisdom and knowledge on tablets which became the Nikal tablets. James wrote that he saw a few in India and translated them with the help, help of the Ushi. Mr. Ritter, the article's author, a travel guide with trips to India, didn't include pictures in his article to back up his extraordinary claims. I was able to finally speak with Mr. Ritter, and he eventually sent me images that he claimed represented those Nicole tablets. I posted the pictures, and the response was overwhelmingly negative. Some pictures showed the script instead of the symbols that James wrote about, and a large metallic plate is actually on display in a Bayreuth Lemon Museum. As representative of the second millennium, proto Bibliam script, the magazine article was a hoax. Uh, let me repeat that. The magazine article was a hoax. Now, it is a well-known accusation that James was the only Westerner who ever seen the McCall tablets, and he provided no documentation to back up their existence. Other than including some symbols and their meanings in his books, there are no pictures or drawings of them. I would like to add a bit more to this discussion with something from James' scrapbooks. Quite a bit of the data in the scrapbooks is related to his theories and may be found in his written works. However, there are some things that James didn't include in his books. There are three newspaper clippings from November 1924 and January 1925 that refer to 125 tablets found in India and translated by Lieutenant Colonel James Churchward and unnamed, excuse me, unnamed Buddhist scholars. The tablets describing you move use the same terms and phrases as James uses in his subsequent works. Immediately after this presentation, a posting will be released to actually the free postings on the will be released to the my mucom blog showing the image of the newspaper articles and the transcript. I will not be posting it to social media for at least a week to provide an exclusive view for all of you. I will also admit that the idea of an enormous mid-Pacific Ocean continent is not very plausible given the geology of the Pacific Ocean floor. 
However, another consider must, consideration must be factored in. James wrote that the idea of a continent also came from Polynesian legends. Given the long distance between different islands and island chains, could a nation of connected peoples who knew the waters intimately and not consider their territory to be a cohesive whole? Not a fence, just, just a thought. Another thing I learned from the lady who had received those metal, metallic pots was that James told her that he had two daughters and he provided pictures. This is actually a big deal. Because if it were true, there could be copies of James' unpublished manuscripts stored away in the attic of their descendants. Does anybody recognize these people? <laughs> now, if you think this is far-fetched, here's the cover of one such manuscript that has been uncovered. This is the first public display of this image. I'm working on the details of making the entire work available to the public. So if you recognize the pictures of those two young ladies, See if there are any old boxes lying up in the attic that might contain unpublished manuscripts. As mentioned earlier, I've also been researching the contents of James' works. But first, let me provide a hint of the title of the works. Please don't pick a long name to add to another long name. It's just really hard to lock right down every time. Now, I had originally thought to use Digging Up the Lost Common of Moo, Motherland of Men, and then I thought, when I got to the children of Moo, how would people understand digging up the children of Moo? <laughs> Probably not. So, my approach to my first book, Lifting the Veil on the Lost Time of Moo, Motherland Men, was simple. Save the personal part of James' life for a future biography. The research analysis and analysis would consist of examining the references James used, the books and authors he quoted. Depending upon the available information, the original text from books he quoted was reproduced after James' text in a new appendix that was listed and quoted all the books he referenced. Likewise, a short biography was created for each of the authors so that the readers knew or could at least have a guess on the validity of what they wrote. Did they have the life experience necessary to form rational opinions or had they been venturing into fantasy land? I also come to the text to find references to other theories or statements. One of the sources used were copies of James' scrapbooks that I had obtained indirectly from the estate of Howard Heresy. Although many of the articles were unreferenced, in the text I was able to piece together quite a few references that were included in the text. And I included them as footnotes, footnotes in the end of each chapter. Some of these footnotes were transcribed texts over a page or two long. I do find it helpful to include primary resources as appendices, when and where they might be difficult to obtain. It also makes it easier to answer questions you may have, so that you don't have to run to the bookshelf or go to the bookstore and get another copy. In researching Moo, I presented some new information and reiterated a few points that needed repeating. Due to copyright restrictions, I can't post it, but DVDs are available from the Ozark Mountain Publishing website. Be sure to use the drop-down menu to make your selection. I have also been working on a workshop to answer the question I am frequently asked. What's the difference between Lemuria and Mu? I used to think that this was a very easy question to answer. James never mentioned Lemuria, so they had to be different. After I started to examine the question more closely, I realize that the question is really not so easily answered. The in-depth research may necessitate a study guide. I hope to have it ready in 2015 and may present it as a webinar. Subscribers to the newsletter will receive a discount on attendance. Another portion of the research this year has been to catalog the tablet discoveries made by William Niven in the Valley of Mexico during the early 1920s. As many of you know, these tablets were carved into andesite, a volcanic rock that is considered quite hard. While well, not quite as hard as granite, the effort involved in creating these images indicates the importance of the symbolism to those that undertook the effort to carve them, especially without metal tools. This repository is slowly being built and can be accessed from the link below. New images and interpretations are being added regularly. 
The purpose is to find the real meaning behind the symbols and to better understand the people that created them. All comments and additional information are welcome. Some time has passed since I first stated my mission statement in the first podcast, and I think this might be a good time to get everybody back together on the same page. My great-grandfather, James Churchward, was author of a series of books on the sunken Pacific Ocean continent that he named Mu. I was raised with a skeptical view of James' theories through my father. Due to other phenomena that are detailed elsewhere and the amount of email correspondence I receive, I decided to start researching his life and theories without dismissing them out of hand as I had done previously. Note that no member of my family receives any final financial compensation for the continued publication of my great-grandfather's works. I am free of any conflict of interest to conduct my research. My findings will not always agree with what James wrote, and I am under no pressure to amend anything to allow it to fit within his worldview or match his theories. Allow me to further state that I was not heir to the oft-suggested and non-existent James Churchward fortune. I have a day job, and that as time permits, the research continues. Additionally, there are no PayPal donation buttons on the website, no paid subscriptions for the inside knowledge, nor will you find emails from me that tell only one side of an old story and forget to mention contrary information. If there are holes or gaps in any information I have presented, I welcome any and all remarks, comments, corrections, or any additional information to tell the whole story. I'll provide access to the my-moo.com guest blog to present your views and information to a family audience. I must admit that my approach and information has made me no friends among those seeking to maintain the status quo. However, it has resonated with free-thinking individuals that are on the path to a real understanding of the truth. That is my mission, the truth. In conclusion, I would like to leave you with the following thought. One of James' core ideas was that we all share a common origin and that we should be mindful of our shared human existence. All of us are human. We all want happiness for our family, friends, and ourselves. We all suffer the pressures of our human existence to survive. Although it may be more difficult to recognize in today's multifaceted and fast-paced world, it is up to each and every one of us to make the world a better place to live in without regard to religious beliefs or skin color or whatever excuse is used to avoid what is difficult and right. Thanks for listening, and have a great day. Thanks for watching. My Mu signifies that this is my research into the lost continent of Mu and theories of ancient advanced civilizations. These podcasts are created on an as-needed basis, but you can catch more information reading the my-moo.com blog or visiting the my-moo.com website. Thanks for joining me on this voyage of discovery.